All right, are we ready? Yeah! It's now time for the Team High School Show on ESPN Radio 1017 The Team. Stand by for action. The team is your home for the best coverage of high school sports anywhere. Here to bring you the show is Gary Harris. He's sexy, sassy, and full of spunk. Right here on ESPN Radio 1017 The Team, the flagship station for APS Athletics. Good Saturday morning, everybody. Let's jump right into it. Another beautiful day. I can't remember the last time I had a miserable-looking Saturday, but that's just as well. Thanks for tuning into the weekly Team High School show here on ESPN Radio 1017. We're the flagship station for APS Athletics. I'm Gary Heron, your congenial host, full of spunk and all that other stuff they say. Going to get you caught up on high school action. We want to thank New Senda Credit Union for sponsoring the show each week. And, of course, we couldn't do without NMPreps.com. And without further ado, let's go to the high school guru in the state of New Mexico, Kyle Henderson. Good morning, Kyle. Gary, good morning. What a night of high school football. Yeah, well, let's back up to Thursday night. I saw you at Wilson Stadium, Cleveland, Spank, Sandia, and the Matadors homecoming game. Uh, your take on that game? It was a boring game, honestly. I mean, I, I felt the wind had a lot to do with it. Um, there wasn't a lot of passing. I mean, it was uh, it was kind of a lackluster performance on both ends, I felt. Um, Cleveland was a strong favorite, came out, did what they needed to do. I expected them to win by large margin, which they did, 42-7. to Gabe Ortega, um, that was a beautiful run, which was negated by an inadvertent whistle. Next play, Nico Papadopoulos. Um, bust out that 50-yard touchdown run, which was, I feel, the play of the week. Uh, Cleveland now 5 in a row, still the number one team in New Mexico. Um, I think it sets up a great matchup, win or lose with El Dorado next week in week six. Yeah, was that a great uh, uh, example of karma right after Gabe's uh, touchdown run gets called back because the official, the line judge, thought that Nico had been handed the ball and was down on the ground, and then Gabe's racing down the sideline, and then one play later, Nico goes a distance? Yeah, I, I felt the same way. I was like, I bet you they're going to do the exact same thing. And, um, you know, credit Coach Reinhauer for calling that play. And, uh, you know, Cleveland just, you know, has been so dominant through five weeks. And I talked with Coach Reinhauer after the game. And I asked him, you know, how talk to me about, you know, what it's been and how this team has played through five weeks. And he told me, you know, we've won these games aggressively, and which they certainly have. I mean, they've scored 50 points against Clovis. They've scored 42 against Sandia. Um, next week, it sets up a great matchup with El Dorado. Cleveland doing what Cleveland is supposed to be doing, and, um, you know, nothing short of the number one team in New Mexico. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it's kind of weird when a team scores, in, in uh, finger quotes, only 42 points, and the coach is a little bit miffed because they'd scored at least 50 in their four previous games. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I, I think that's just the expectations that Coach Reinhauer as well as the team have for themselves. I mean, they're coming out as, 21 point, 28 point favorites against teams. And even though, you know, nobody wants to be number one and you can't read into it, you're going to. I mean, it's the media and uh, Cleveland knows how good they are and how capable they are. And, um, you know, they've been dominant this season and everybody expects them to ride out undefeated. And I'm not sure if they will, but right now they're just playing at another level and they're the clear cut number one. Yeah. And uh, talk a little bit about a blast from the past on the Cleveland sideline the other night, a uh, star contributor to the perfect storm 13 and 0 team of 2011, Romel Jordan. A lot of people ask me, how does this 2015 Cleveland team match up with the 2011 team? And, um, you know, that's an interesting debate. Cleveland back in 2011, when they went undefeated, had Lobo quarterback at that, or he went on to commit to the Lobos. Cole Gouchy at quarterback, six four, two hundred. What was he? Twenty pounds, and yeah. he was just running every, running over everybody. And then Ramil Jordan um, was a fantastic asset. He's a four three guy, so very comparable teams. Big offense, tons of defense. Yeah, now Ramil with the Lobos, he's kind of uh, been reduced in getting any carries last week. Uh, did you talk to him about uh, what the future holds for him at UNM? I, you know what, I didn't, but, you know, it's just great to see these New Mexico athletes getting a shot to play at the next level. There's a lot of g- these guys that um, don't get the notoriety, but then they do their thing in college. Ramil Jordan, besides being an exceptional football player, is an exceptional person. Um, just enjoy talking with those guys and watching them mature from young men to grown men, and um, now seeing them as a low ball, I think it's just awesome. It, it's, a, it's a real joy to see. Last night, I was at the Rio Rancho game, the exciting win over Clovis. Where was Kyle Henderson and NMPreps.com? Well, last night, I was in Las Cruces at the Field of Dreams watching Centennial beat Las Cruces 42-35. to It was a great game in front of a great atmosphere. Um, Las Cruces actually came out. They, they were leading 13-0 after a 65-yard touchdown run and a 42-yard touchdown run by Cameron Miller. 
And then Centennial came back in the second half. Um, you know, they, they actually took the lead by 13. Las Cruces scored one final touchdown to make it a little bit tighter. It was a close game all the way around. Those two teams are very good. I think Centennial has some has an opportunity to do something very special this year, and that's win coach Aaron O'Connell his first ever state championship. Yeah, uh, they're the number one team in 5A, I would imagine. Yeah, I, I think so, but, you know, you have the Artesia Bulldogs as well, who we can't forget about. I mean, right. last night, the Carlsbad like... Cavemen, and um, I was down in Artesia a couple weeks ago, and they're excellent. I mean, quarterback Justin Hodling last night, he threw for, he was 34 for 54 passing for close to 300 yards and three touchdowns. Um, you know, he's a fantastic quarterback, still kind of wondering why he doesn't have a Division One offer. He certainly looks the part. Well, are there any drawbacks in his form, or is he getting a lot? Of, is he doing a lot like Easton Brewer did uh, and not getting recognition? You know what? That's a that's a very um, interesting comparison. I think that um, Easton probably had some better targets on the outside, but Justin has probably better physical tools in the sense that he's six five, close to two hundred pounds, um, and you know he he plays in that spread set just like Easton did. But it's a very comparable comparison, and I'm not sure. Um, what he's going to do next year, but I think he's going to have some opportunities. If it isn't at the Division One level, someone's going to give him a shot. Did you stay down in Las Cruces to see the uh, the big game down there today, the uh, Mayfield contest, Mayfield and El Dorado at one? Yeah, there's some big contests in uh, in Las Cruces today. So you have the big game last night between Centennial and Las Cruces, and then today you have El Dorado, who's 4-0 on the season, taking on 3-1 and Mayfield, the Trojans coming off. A 46 to 28 loss last week to Alamogordo. And then following that game, it's a double dip as you have Onyata, who's looking for their first victory. They're taking on West Mesa for their homecoming game. So it's a double dip at the Field of Dreams today. Yeah, but my question was, are you, are you down in Las Cruces still? Yes, yes, I'm everywhere. I'm, uh, I'm in Las Cruces. I'm at the game. Uh, next week, I'll probably be in the metro area for Cleveland, El Dorado. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been on the road lately. What about La Cueva? Do you, they're not going to make the playoffs. What I'm looking at, of course, they're, they're undefeated in district, but uh, I don't think the Bears are going to make the 12-team playoff field. Yeah, I don't think so either, and I think I think probably La Cueva likely got eliminated. I know district hasn't taken play, but a lot of these early season matchups contribute to where the NMA sees the teams in the playoffs. Um, La Cueva losing a game last night to Valley. Valley likely is going to win that district, I would assume, in 5 6 a. Um, Enrico Marcelli and the Vikings getting their first win last night over La Cueva, 18 to 15. You also have Stiebler surviving against Manzano. I think that was somewhat of a playoff play in game um, for the 12 team set. That was an overtime win by Stiebler, 27 to 20. Rod Williams, you know, I have to give credit to him. Um, they don't have a lot of talent on that team. They have a couple guys who can go, but they're four and one on the season. They're probably not supposed to be four and one at this point, according to the experts, but. Um, you know, they're doing a good job, 4-1 and one headed into Week 6. I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive, and they take on Highland next week. Of course, right now, I think uh, looking at that game, although Manzano lost, I think the Monarchs will win two games in district. I think they can beat Highland and La Cueva. I'm not sure Siebel can win two games in their tough district. They can beat Santa Fe, but can they beat a Rio Rancho, Volcano Vista, or Cleveland? Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that, but the way it sets up, if they beat Santa Fe and if they beat Highland, they'll be 6-4. and four by the end of district, even if they did lose three district games, then they have a win over Valley and they have a win over Manzano. So yeah. depending on where those teams fall, you know, Stiebel could be that 12th team in and maybe lined up with a 10th seed or a 9th seed somewhere along that. Plus, they only lost to Clovis 14-6, to and Clovis has turned out to be pretty good this year. Yeah, i tell you that. Micah Gray is an exciting guy to watch. Over 200 yards, three touchdowns last night. Uh, against Rio Rancho. I'll talk about that game in a little while. The Rams win that one 37-34. Uh, a note for you, although you probably already knew this, uh, and I know you knew Henry Haddis gave a verbal commitment to Stanford, and Grant Hermans gave a verbal commitment to Iowa State, but there was an Iowa State assistant coach on the sidelines watching Grant Hermans and the Rams last night. Wow, that's that's got to be pretty exciting. And one thing that that I really like is when these Division One coaches come to see their committed prospects, other guys get a chance to, sh- to shine. Right. For example, he's going to look at Micah Gray, who ran for over 200 yards as a junior. He's going to get an opportunity to see Josh Foley, who's also a junior, who I hear had a big game. He's going to see a kicker. So, you know, that's what happens in some of these larger metro areas is when the college coaches come to see their prize recruits, they're going to keep tabs on a couple other guys who shine, who 
who stand out, and, um, you know, that, that's great. I mean, Grant Herman's, as we talked last week on the show, he's a great human human being. I mean, he's everything that you would want your son to be, and going to Iowa State, I think, is a great is a great opportunity. Kyle Henderson, nmpreps.com. Right now, your pick, your comments on what you forecast. Look in the nmpreps.com, Crystal Ball, Eldorado, Mayfield. Who wins that one and why? I think Mayfield will pull it out. I mean, we've seen Mayfield lose games in the past. You know, a couple years ago, they lost to Carlsbad, rebounded. A couple years ago, they lost to Volcano Vista, rebounded. I'm, I'm taking Mayfield today to beat the Eldorado Eagles, and I have nothing to do because I don't like Eldorado. I could care less. But I think the Mayfield Trojans at home win today a very tight contest. Isaac Vance, he's still questionable last week. I heard he was sick. I heard it was his ankle. I'm not sure if he's going to play today. If he plays today, Mayfield wins. They continue to do what they do. Eldorado, though, very dangerous. The best team in Albuquerque metro area. Expect Noah Swipe to do his thing. Last week he ran for 150 and three touchdowns. And last night on uh, NM or uh, game day on Channel 4, there was a nice little segment on Schweitzer and uh, how he got hurt last year in a game against Cleveland. Lacerated a kidney, had to have an operation, nearly lost his life. Uh, a good story, Noah Schweitzer. Good luck to Eldorado uh, today at Mayfield. Good call, uh, Kyle. And uh, thanks again. We'll talk to you next week. Kyle Henderson, the guru of high school football. He knew, he knew all the scores. He knows all the sizes. He, he doesn't have a chalk full of information in front of him. But uh, have a safe trip back. Enjoy the game today. And we'll talk to you next Saturday, Kyle. Thank you. All right, that's Kyle Henderson. Nobody does it better when it comes to high school football. We'll we'll hold him to this next week. We'll ask him, well, Mayfield won. Just like you said, they'll pull it out, maybe a field goal or something, or maybe Isaac Vance is back on the field predicting Mayfield beats El Dorado. And El Dorado's got that big game Friday night, the storm coming. We've reached the end of the first quarter. We're going to take a break. we got uh, Scott Galetti going to talk some more high school football and a little high school volleyball after this. You're listening to the Team High School Show. I'm Gary Heron. Stick around for the second quarter. It's on deck after this timeout. 